Hey everybody, we're gonna continue our brain health podcast for this month, and now we're gonna talk about, I'm kind of really excited about video two the most, about <laughs> butyrate, uh, butyric acid, in yeah. both the gut and in system wide. And what? you've probably heard of this already, but you may not know anything about it until we talk about it, so stay tuned. We're I am related. Dr. Philip Oob. I'm Aubrey. And so we're gonna be talking about butyrate and how you can both uh, take it as a supplement, but also create it yourself. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's go back a little bit. Yeah. And, and I did a lot of talking in the first video, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you do this. So butyrate- You're very excited. And, uh, so yes, I'm excited, you... but I, I'm excited for us. So <laughs> butyrate in the bowels, what, what, yes. give us the story behind butyrate in the bowels okay. in your intestines. So basically what happens is you eat fiber and the bacteria in your gut ferment fiber and produce something called short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids, there's a few of them. Butyrate's the most prominent one. That's the one that we want to focus on today. That's beautiful for brain health. But more importantly, they produce a short chain fatty acid called butyrate, and it nourishes the colon. It helps balance insulin levels, helps with inflammation, but it also kind of is used to feed that same beneficial bacteria. There's only two ways to regrow beneficial bacteria. Fiber is really the only way, but sometimes you can help with butyrate supplementation to help kind of fluff them up a little bit more. Um, that's basically it. Uh, so that's cool <laughs> like, though. That's I mean, the, the nerd idea. inside of me gets excited because there's a, a component to our health that yeah. we cannot live without bacteria. Right. And we eat a food that we don't actually digest. Right. Something else digests it for and us. Ferments it. Ferments it for us. Farts and then it. feeds it to yeah. us. Did you Sorry. say farts it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it does make gas. It's a little, that's what a little immature. Says. So this butyric acid, so you can see it called either one, butyric acid or butyrate, it's the same mm -hmm. thing as just some biochemistry terms. Um, and so this, the, you, once again, say you eat fiber. So if you're not eating enough fiber, you are not feeding these beneficial bacteria. Correct. If you are not feeding them, they're not multiplying and they're in very small populations. So the first step to regenerate these guys is to start eating more fiber. Mm -hmm. As you eat more fiber, then they start uh, reproducing and making more, mm -hmm. and then they digest even more of this fiber and then feed yourself. Right. And so not only does this butyrate feed other microorganisms it feeds your own intestinal lining mm -hmm. and if you know anything about your intestinal lining we like to compare it to the shag carpet um, of, of a carpet or a rug yeah. and so if you've got a nice shag carpet you could pour a whole pot of coffee on it and it would absorb it right mm -hmm. but if you poured a whole pot of coffee on a tile, tile floor it would spread okay. really far out yeah. so your intestines have limited real estate in order to absorb all of your nutrients if your intestinal lining has been burned and um, killed off with inflammatory foods, then it's more like that tile floor and it can't absorb things, so things just slip right on through and you mm -hmm. poop them out. Whereas if you have a very shag carpeted, very um, fluffy intestinal lining, then you have lots of real estate, lots of surface area to absorb all those nutrients. Mm -hmm. okay? And they've proven that three days on a low to no fiber diet has a detrimental effect on that beneficial bacteria, three days. But that inadvertently also means that three days of a very high fiber diet, and I'm talking about you want no less than 38 grams of fiber. Try to get 50, try to get 70 if you can. That's a lot of fiber, but you can do it. Um, and how can someone calculate that? Because I'm like 38 yeah. grams, I don't know what that so means. So you can do it on an app called Chronometer, uh, C-R-O-N-O meter, and it will tell you your kind of net carbohydrates, your fiber, it's free. You can track no it on excuses. your phone, put it on the computer. Yeah. So, and once you kind of are, are aware about how many foods have different fiber in there, you can just get a ton. Ideally, if you can get that nine cups of fiber a day, you're already going to change Nine cups it. of vegetables. Ve vegetables, not sorry. Not fiber. Ooh. Yeah. Poop yourself. Yeah. <laughs> or not at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, basically, just eat more fiber. Yes. So, this, this, but over time, as we've learned more and more about mm -hmm. butyric acid, supplement companies started making butyrate mm -hmm. or butyric acid as a supplement. And at first it came out in capsules mm -hmm. um, and it was based, uh, attached to calcium and magnesium and stuff, and those are great. But we later learned that those are actually kind of destroyed by the, in, the right. stomach acid before they actually make it to the small intestine. And so it's nice, sure, it's uh, some extra nutrients, but if it's not making it to the small intestine, it's really not doing yeah. what you need it to do. So they started making it in triglyceride form. Right, and so primarily we've seen this in oil-based, yeah, a liquid, oil. not a capsule. Yeah, you'll see it commonly kind of um, patented as sun butyrate, sun butyrate yeah. and it's 70% more absorption through the gut. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they will make capsules out of it eventually, but right now we, we only have it in the... Oh, no, no, we have the capsules by, it's Tributrin Supreme by okay. Designs for Health. It's a phospholipid complex on the pill itself. 
Okay, I did. I have seen that yeah. on the shelf. Okay, so that's newer too. Um, the main one that we use because the the it's a lot. So anytime it's a lot, you end up having to swallow a lot of capsules. So yeah. and that's the time we usually tell people just go straight for the liquid. Right. It's cheaper. It's easier to get in, and it tastes fine. It's really not even blueberry and lemon. And I mean, the only weird thing is that you feel like your mouth is full of oil. But like, pour it in your protein shake. Pour it. Just I put it in my coffee the other day, and I was like, yeah. well, "Why does this coffee taste like lemon?" <laughs> like, disgusting. oh, it's flavor. <laughs> I forgot it's it. Because the the one I like we like the most. The one we use is called uh, uh, Butyrate MC. And so as you, what? Which is actually a really good thing to tie in later of two different types of butyrate when you're taking that supplement. Oh, well tell me, because I didn't know this. <laughs> no, we're good, we'll keep going. Oh, okay. We'll bring it in. So the butyrate MCT is made by Douglas yes. Labs. It comes in a, in a, in a glass jar. Pure um, has it too, but we use Douglas. Yeah, and so, and you can order these from our store if you mm -hmm. want to. So the reason, uh, plenty of people add MCT to their coffee and yeah. that's good for brain health, speaking of which. Um, and so the butyrate comes in an MCT oil base, so you pour it in your coffee or shake or mm -hmm. whatever, the spoon. I often pour mine in my shake, um, but I just wasn't making a shake that yeah. day, so I poured it in my coffee. But anyway, it's one tablespoon once a day or twice a day, preferably twice a yeah. day. But as Aubrey mentioned earlier, anytime you're increasing the fiber or increasing the butyrate mm -hmm. in your bowels, you want to make sure that you do it kind of slowly because you can get some gas and bloating um, as you ramp that up. But that is something as the new microbiome or as the new microorganisms grow and develop, mm -hmm. they'll actually start um, making less and less gas over time. So don't start taking it and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so bloated and gassy, this is bad. You need to wait and, and you can get through that phase and on to the, the healing phase of that. Right. Yeah, so don't be nervous if all of a sudden you're taking the butyrate and you get gassy or bloated or something like that. That means you're actually having a healing reaction, in my opinion, that you're increasing some beneficial bacteria, you're having some healing elements to it, so you're gonna get some residual digestive kind of symptoms, totally fine. If you want to, you can titrate up and maybe do like a teaspoon once a day and then go to twice a day because people have sensitive bowels um, and you don't want to play with this before you go to work. Again, yes. don't take a lot of MCT oil on an empty stomach, so don't be the person yeah, who's like... Yeah, especially if you haven't ever done MCT exactly. before. Exactly. <laughs> Give me like a slip and slide through your bowels. Yes, basically MCT what oil a crash is, landing at the end. I know. It's super fractionated. It's absorbed immediately, but what happens is if you have too much, you don't need to actually break down the MCT oil. It's just absorbed. It's going to go to your bowels. What happens with oil in the bowels? It makes loose stool. So... Just don't have, don't be that person who's like, I can't wait to take butyrate and takes two blood, tablespoons blood, 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 blood. or three or just chugs it in the morning before they go to work. It's going to be a horrible ride on You're the way to work. You're going to poop yourself, yeah. basically. And yeah. Maybe a good necessary poop, but you know. Uh, but like yeah, so that's going to be the MCT butyrate that's going to help with your intestinal kind of microbiome. Yep. So we talked about making it on your own. You mm -hmm. can eat the nine cups of vegetables. You can take a supplement, uh, sun butyrate or butyrate MCT from Douglas Labs is the one we're using mostly, or tributanin. Mm -hmm. Tributrin Supreme from Designs for Health. Okay, both of and which are on our store. Yeah, and, and we say it's good for brain health, but can you kind of just do a quick synopsis on exactly why butyrate is good for your brain that, health? That's a good point. So the, the, the main hormone in the brain that a lot of uh, focus is, is put on is this, this hormone called BDNF, uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor. And so this BDNF, yep, this BDNF hormone is only made in the brain, and it is the direct stimulant to regenerate brain cells, mm -hmm. um, kill off old ones, and, and, and regenerate yep. and grow and heal and things. Um, it, because your brain is always learning and growing. If you sit on a couch for seven days and don't move, you're going to be kind of a vegetable when you get out of it. Yeah. So if you've, you're always evolving, even if you're not um, doing brain games or whatnot. Your brain is always identifying the environment and changing. And so without BDNF, you can't regenerate, you can't regrow. So ultimately, the brain health starts to get sacrificed without it. So butyrate is one of the direct and most mm -hmm. powerful stimulants to the brain health, to that BDNF. Frequently, I, I ask patients, what do they think the most powerful things to stimulate the brain is? And when we get a mixture of all kinds of answers, but actually butyrate and fiber is actually the number one mm -hmm. stimulant to regrow and regenerate uh, brain cells. So that's one of the reasons we're talking about this. And it's also, if you've ever heard that ketones or ketogenic dieting yes. is great for dementia and brain health and brain fog and, and all that stuff, this is why, because ketogenic, if we're gonna segue to the next butyrate, mm -hmm. ketogenic dieting actually generates butyric acid, but not the butyric acid in your bowels, it actually generates butyric acid from the liver and it goes all over system wide. So butyrate in the bowels is the main source that you're gonna make on a daily basis, unless you're doing ketogenic. Um, and so make sure you're eating enough fiber for your brain. So if you have brain fog, dementia, mm -hmm. memory loss, whatever it may be, nine cups of vegetables right. and or butyrate and or trade some. So say you eat six cups of vegetables, yeah. then maybe you add more butyrate or something like that. Yeah. But yeah, the cool thing is that these butyrates, they're different types of butyrate. 
different types of butyric acid. Mm -hmm. And they've proven, there needs to be a little bit more science on it. There's like a 10 page thing that we just kind of went through. Um, but the synergistic effect of these two different butyrates are actually the most valuable kind of combo you can do for your brain health. Mm -hmm. So ideally, a ketogenic diet with nine cups of <laughs> low glycemic veggies is kind of like a one-two hit for the brain. Supercharged. Yeah, supercharged. I, and you don't sure. necessarily have to do ketogenic. No. And there's things that we're gonna get Aubrey to talk about ketogenic, but just fasting in general, you've yeah. probably heard is good for brain health and dementia. So any type of fasting where your body runs out of calories that you're intaking mm -hmm. is gonna generate ketones. Yeah, because it's naturally produced after what, like 16 to 18 hours of- I, mean, I think it's like eight hours of, of fasting will start to generate ketones. Yeah. You may not be able to prick your finger and no. see the ketones. You might be able to see it in the urine, but your, your body can't survive that long without sugar right. coming in. So I think they start getting generated around six to eight hours yeah. and it just builds and builds and yeah. builds as you go longer. So and that's, that's one of the reasons for the, I'm sorry, no, intermittent no, 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 fasting okay. that they usually say pushing it to 16 hours is, is where most of the benefit get yeah. uh, you get. Uh, don't do any necessary, well, I'm not saying don't do shorter than 16 hours, but the goal is to work up to that 16 right. hours of fasting. Um, and then you can do longer fast, 24 hour fast, 72 hour mm -hmm. fast, which, which sounds really crazy, but is really powerful, right? Sometimes easy, once you start titrating up, your body just becomes used to it. Yep. So there's system-wide butyric acid when right. you go ketogenic or do fasting. And so this doesn't mean you can just fast once and say, I'm done. Obviously right. it's the level and the amount. You don't just eat one cup of broccoli and be like, there, I made my butyrate for the day, <laughs> I'm so done, good. right? <laughs> so you don't just skip a meal and say, right. oh, I made my butyric acid. So it depends on what your goal is. So if you do have dementia or brain fog or something, or ADD, whatever it may be that you're trying to treat, then you need to take things more aggressive and do it more often. Mm -hmm. So doing that 16 hour intermittent fasting every day or three times a week and, and just listening to your brain health and see what's happening. Now remember by the time you develop some dysfunction, it takes a little bit more effort than it would be to restore it right. and than it would be to maintain it. So you might need to do a 24 hour fast, 72 hour fast. And my usual rule on that is however many days you fast is how many weeks you should take a break in between. So if you're gonna do a 24 hour fast, that's one day, you can do that once a week. Yeah. If you're gonna do a 48 hour fast, you wanna wait two weeks before you do that yeah. again. Then a 72 hour fast, three weeks. Okay. Um, I don't know many people that want to go beyond that, but that's yeah. that's the usual recommendations we go. So that's that's one of the ways you can get the liver to make you but your butyrate. Um, but there's some huge pitfalls in the ketogenic diet yes. that people always fall trapped to. They hear ketogenic and they think meat and cheese. Right. They think meat and cheese. That's all you do. That's all you eat. And it is delicious. Right. But Aubrey, help them out. Like, what is the ketogenic we want them to do? So ideally, and they've proven this, that you can have up to two pounds of leafy greens and vegetables and not get knocked out ketosis. The whole How point much is one of those containers of spinach? Isn't that like oh. three pounds of spinach or something? No, it's like... One pound? Maybe a pound? Oh, I don't know. I that don't sounds know. depressing. Okay. Anyway, so th it, two pounds of vegetables yes, is a lot. It, yeah, and the whole, the whole point about it is the insulin release. Are you knocking yourself out? Are you having too much sugar in your bloodstream, increasing that insulin? You can actually knock yourself out of a ketosis state with too much protein because roughly 60% of protein gets turned into sugar. Mm -hmm. So the whole point about having low glycemic veggies is that you're not increasing that insulin. You're not increasing the sugar in your bloodstream, so your body's maintaining kind of like that that burning state. And in addition, now you're making two different forms of butyrate, right? You've got mm -hmm. your vegetables and fiber, right. making butyrate in your bowels, and then you're fat, or not fasting, but you're low sugar, so you're generating butyric acid from your liver as an energy source, right. systemically. And we'll, exactly, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but keto, the keto diet isn't good for most people. There's a select like kind of percentage of people it's great for, but there's different things that you can do like cyclical keto or a moderate to low carbohydrate, cycling, things like that, and we'll talk about that in another video too. So with cyclic keto, mm -hmm. one of the things I just want, what cyclic keto means is means like you do five days, the most common is you do five days on keto and then two days off keto. Now that's not necessarily a cheat day where you go and eat pizza and donuts. No. It's just a day where you allow more carbs and you allow your body to come out of ketosis um, and then right back in it in, in five days. Yeah. So you still want to be a pretty balanced macros on that yeah, regard. Yeah, like sweet potatoes. You can, um, you can supplement with uh, but butyrate. Any, anytime you see exogenous ketones mm -hmm. or or, or ketone drinks, where there's yeah. tons of products now for ketogenic dieters. Those are basically beta hydroxybutyrate. Those are butyric acid. Um, they don't taste that great. That's why they're often kind of sweetened and things with mm -hmm. stevia and whatnot. But um, that's another way you can supplement butyric acid. But remember, that butyric acid is more for system wide, and it does help the brain, right. and not going to help the gut necessarily. But don't necessarily be eating 
don't take exogenous ketones trying to get into a ketogenic diet not if you're same. not doing the diet appropriately or yeah. if you're eating too much sugar and you're like these ketones aren't working you're like well yeah you like they're basically a little useless right now. Yeah. They may help with your brain function and energy a little bit, but usually it's when you're transitioning in and out of like cyclical keto or something like that, where you're adding it in for better energy, easing that process of kind of burning through those carbohydrates, giving your brain a little bit more boost. Yeah. The majority of the butyric acid you make or butyrate you make is from the ketogenic diet or fasting. Right. The amount you would drink and, and the expense of it would not be the same. Yeah. It helps. But so that wraps up our nerdy podcast video about nerdy. how butyrate in your bowels and butyrate in your body can actually mm -hmm. stimulate brain health and improve brain focus. So yeah. stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and uh, we'll see you next time.